welcome back to module two. Good to see everybody back. Again, I am Ryan with ZenFX, and this is part two in our two-part series on how to use TradingView. Thanks for joining us again. Again, if you haven't um, watched the other modules that we have on Forex Basics or how to use MT4, then uh, go check those out. But today we're going to be continuing on in our two-part series and learning how to use some of the more advanced features of trading view what I like to call the bells and the whistles as well as just using some of the basic uh, price action and technical analysis markup tools so let's get straight to it all right we left off last time with our chart we kind of went over what all the toolbars are for what the menus are for how to kind of manipulate the properties and to get the charts to you know just how you want it we also looked at, you know, the different uh, data providers that are available when you are selecting um, you know, a currency pair and things like that. So let's get into actually using the chart itself for technical analysis. Now, as I mentioned in the past, uh, two things to keep in mind. One, you can only have three indicators at any given time on your chart, but you can put as many drawings uh, tools and markups on there as you like so there's no limit to that and the difference between MT4 and TradingView is that gonna is gonna be the MT4 you're gonna do a lot of dragging and dropping and in TradingView you're gonna be doing a lot of double clicking as far as you click once to start the point and then you click a second time to drop the point and it's you don't drag and drop in TradingView all right let's go ahead and get started so as I mentioned over here this is our our toolbar and this is what we're going to use for doing our basic technical analysis let's start with just a trend line so if we want to use a trend line okay we drop one point and we drop our second point and that gives us our line now when you see the two dots on the uh, on the ends that means that that particular drawing is highlighted or selected and you can manipulate that going forward now this right here just like our favorites bar is a movable properties bar and this property bar is specifically for whatever drawing uh, piece or line or you know shape that you've drawn uh, that is currently highlighted so for right now we have this trend line highlighted and we can uh, add it to a template but most most often what you're going to do is you're going to be using the different colors as far as just selecting whatever color you like then here is the width you can make it thicker or thinner then this is the the type you can make it dash dotted or solid and then this is a nice feature that we have that we don't have in MT4 and you can select different ends and you can either do just a standard end you can do a arrow which is kind of helpful for if you're uh, you know pointing at something or you can do this which is the ray feature and remember in MT4 we had to select or unselect the ray feature this actually allows you to do it on either side so you can do it on the left side or you can do it on the right side or you know you can do it on both and just have an indefinite line whatever you choose and then you'll manipulate it by grabbing an end and angling it that way or if you grab it in the middle and you can just move the entire line around so that's kind of a fun feature then you have your settings which goes even deeper into the properties of that particular item and then you can again you can go normal or arrow you can just select extend here and you can do a ton of different things you can show the price range you can show the bar range because it's 26 bars from here to here to infinity and beyond then you can show the time and date range it's a, an hour one day and two hours total of all those bars um, and you can just show a ton of different things the distance the angle um, you know stats the middle point which is right here so if you were uh, if you had a line and you didn't know exactly where the middle was there's the middle so a lot of things that you're probably not going to use but uh, good to know that they exist and here is the width that you can just adjust on a sliding scale here's the type that you can adjust again dotted dashed or solid 
Um, the visibility, it's going to show as far as uh, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, you know, you can put it basically to anything. And then this is where you can also show uh, and create an alert. But there's going to be an easier way for us to do that. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, there's also, you can also add it here if you like. Then you can arrange it as far as sending it backwards or forwards, like if you have multiple things on top of each other. And if you ever unselect it, you can easily just left click and reselect it. And now this is a very good feature, uh, clone, copy, and sync. Again, you can sync this to all charts, but more important is the clone and the copy feature. Uh, copy is exactly what it sounds like. You copy it, and then if you hit Control V, you can create an identical copy of it. And you can actually, obviously, as you can see, I hit it a couple times, and you can just do multiple at once by hitting the Control V a couple times, which is just paste in Windows. Uh, but the clone is very nice if maybe you want to do a channel and you want to just keep that exact angle and you just want one and you're not going to manipulate the angle or the length or anything like that and then you can have like an equidistant channel even though we already have we already have a channel button that we can use and then you can lock it in place you can hide it and you can do a ton of other things and if you hide it and then you don't know how to get back to it Obviously, like I said, we have our object tree that you can go back in here, unhide it, and you're good. And then you can also just either remove it with the trash can button or hit your delete button. So we've got that. Now, and like I said, another one that we want to show you, you know, you've got your horizontal line, right? We've got our vertical line here. We've got our ray, which is a real nice tool, um, especially if you're doing uh, support and resistance levels and you want to go from a specific point onward. So the ray, let's say we select this point right here as a one hour resistance level. It's just going to set it from that point into the future and not backwards like a horizontal line will. I find it very, um, very useful uh, for certain types of technical analysis. And then you can just choose to have an already extended line, an already extended ray, um, and that's you know going in any direction at any angle, or you can just choose a, an already preset arrow. Uh, so you don't have to select it out of these, uh, well not that, because that's, a, uh, <laughs> that's obviously a, an extended ray, but if you do a trend line, um, it's easier to do it that way sometimes. Now one of the one that is uh, good that I like to mention is this parallel channel and that's great for doing uh, obviously for doing technical analysis in a channel and you're gonna start with one point and then drag it out until you have a second point connected as we usually do click on the button and then pull down or up depending and you can take it to that next lowest point wherever you think the channel is ending select it and now we have our price break channel where maybe if we were looking for price to go from a volatile bearish market into a normal dropping bearish market when we get a breakout of that channel maybe that's where we want to take our entry position so one of the things that's good about these types of shapes like the channel or the box or anything like that um, is that you can do the saturation and so the fill, I can choose any fill for this box, but even better is that I can choose the saturation level. It can be as dark or as light as I like. And I just find that feature to be very helpful depending on the color scheme that you have for your chart. And then of course the other is to change the actual trend line. Let's make this on fire. Great. Okay. So. We've got that, and then again, like I said, if you want to just start from scratch, trash can it, and you're good to go. Clean chart. All right, so the same is going to be uh, throughout all of these different drawing tools, like the Andrews Pitchfork. You know, you're going to want your median line, and then you're going to want your 
click it again to take your high point and then drag it down and get your low point wherever you want that to be okay then if you want to adjust anything once you've set it in place just grab one of these circles and drag it over this is the only time you'll drag anything and then drop it and now we have a perfect little Andrews pitchfork channel where we see how price came to the median line broke through and now it's back at that median line and we're looking for it to drop some more if you know if Andrews pitchfork is your uh, type of indicator same for the Fibonacci but for the Fibonacci I want to um, point a couple things out as far as the formatting so for Fibonacci you don't have to put it directly on the wick that you're measuring out some people actually find it easier to pull back a little bit and use the horizontal line to get it lined up just right and then pull it down and over to I want it to this point right here if I put it right here it's gonna kind of price the numbers are gonna get a little bit in the way of the levels so I want to pull it over and drop it here right in line with that point and now I have all of my levels pulled out a little bit away from price so it just makes it easier to read now one of the things that is most important as far as Fibonacci goes that I want to show you is the levels itself so <clears throat> we go into our settings and go to style and style is going to show you every level and some some spaces for you to add levels in and that's really going to depend on what type of uh, trader you are as far as what type of retracements that you're looking for especially when you're doing a markup and you're looking for uh, specific retracements sometimes you don't want every single level available and so you can go ahead and just unselect anything that you don't want to look at maybe you just want to look for um, your 68 or a 61.8 retracement and you just click that on and now you can just sit and wait for that to get hit by price okay it's very helpful you can also use it to put in customized levels like I have the 70.5 here again that's the optimal trade entry for those of you that are familiar with the um, inner circle trader uh, Michael Huddleston and um, you know shout out I always like to give credit where credit is due you know I, let's be honest none of us are going to invent anything when it comes to uh, Forex trading so you know if you do end up finding somebody a mentor or anyone online that you know has a system that works for you when you're passing that knowledge on to other people make sure that you cite the source that you actually got it from uh, because we're all just learning and stealing from each other and as long as we are open with our ideas and our knowledge I think that you know, it's gonna make the Forex industry a much better place so that's my little rant so anyways like I said if you want to put in a custom level like let's say for some reason I just think that uh, the 45 percent retracement level is uh, the cat's meow you know I'll put that in point point four five and then I'll add it by selecting the visibility toggle box and then um, I'm gonna say that if it hits I want it to be purple because if it hits you know purple then uh, you know price is about to give me a purple nurple I don't know it's about to twist me up in some way who knows anyways you can do that and adjust that as in any way that you like and then of course your labels your which gives you your price level as well as your retracement percentage you can set that um, you can have the price on there you can have the percentage on there you know or you can just, or you can have the level on there whatever you want and you can put that right left or center I can put it in center see how that is just annoying that's why I don't have it there but you can do it like I said however you want to and you can even put a background in here that shows you the different levels in full color so again absolutely whatever you want to do with it you can even set everything just to be one color you know if I click this everything's gonna be black until I go back in and change them to different colors and then this is going to change back to our rainbow color okay so that's just one thing that I wanted to show you about um, Fibonacci just it's gonna depend on what levels you want to see and like I said you can hide or show any or all of them however you want uh, and uh, since Fibonacci is one of the most popular tools then 
You just want to make sure that you have that down. Now, when we go to our shapes, um, like let's do the rectangle. Now this one, once we place it wherever we want it, again, this is going to be your saturation color and you want to want to adjust that to whatever you think looks, uh, looks best and then adjust it until it's just to that point where you can see the shape but you can also see price and it doesn't get in your way. Now it's going to look hazy until you go ahead and unselect it and then when you unselect it it'll put it behind your uh, price candles and it'll make it just look uh, much nicer. So that's how we do a shape. Then of course text is very straightforward. You know, select it, drop it in place, put down whatever notes you have for yourself and hit OK. And of course just like in Word you can do, uh, you can wrap the text, you can do a border, you can do a background, you know, whatever you want to do like that and then hit OK. And then anytime that you do another piece of text, it's going to bring up the exact same thing that you wrote the last time. But it's going to be highlighted, so if you start typing, hoojabooja, it's just going to overwrite it, kind of like in an Excel file. And I'll just hit cancel. Alright. Now, that's text. Now if we go to our, um, our harmonics, our patterns, our cipher patterns, you know, our... Uh, harmonic patterns or our ABCD patterns. Um, th the main ones that you're going to be using for now is going to be your X, A, B, C, D, which are, is basically all of your harmonics. It just depends on the levels that you set your harmonics at. Then your A, B, C, D pattern is going to be your, your go-to when you're first starting out. You should be learning that one first. And then uh, your head and shoulders pattern is also a very popular one. Now let's just talk about real quickly about the A, B, C, D pattern. So for that, you're going to have four points. You're going to have your top point, which is your A. Then you're going to come down and you're going to set your B point. You can do it on the wick or next to it, whatever is easier for you to see. Click a second time. Then you're going to pull this up to your C point, which we want it to be obviously between the 50 and the 61.8 range. 61.8 is best. But you go, you want to line it up. You can either do it to the left or to the right or right on top. Like I say, if you do it on top, it's kind of hard to see. Go ahead and click that. And you see this 50, this 0.256, that's really helpful because it's measuring out the retracement as you draw out the points. So I can see right away, even without using a Fibonacci, that that's a point, that's a 52% retracement level. So it's kind of right at that level where we might want to look for um, a 121% extension of the C to D leg. So we're going to pull the D and final leg down. And like I said, we might want to just look for uh, a 121 or a 1 to 1. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting that wrong. But, uh, you know, we want to look for maybe like a 1 to 1 ratio or whatever but the second number is going to tell you exactly what that next point is going to be now obviously this has already happened so a lot of times you're going to use this let's do another one you're going to use this for future predictions so we don't have a retracement yet but let's say we started on this impulse leg and came down to this B point so we might want to look for if we get a retracement up to the 61.8 up to about here then we want a one-to-one -one retracement let me move the chart up a little bit again another great thing about trading view is being able to manipulate it and then I want to pull this down to 161.8 I want a one-to-one -one retracement okay so boom and then that's another great place to be able to use the uh, clone tool. So we come down, we do a one-to-one -one movement with a trend line, hit the clone, and then I just move it over to where I would think the C point is going to be, right here. And you see we have a one-to-one -one retracement. And so if price comes up here and hits, like here's a, some just quick technical analysis. If it hits this level, then I'm going to look to take it 
from the C to D leg down to this one-to-one -one movement as an aggressive move and then if if it reverses off this D point then we do our actual ABCD trade which is from the D point retracing back up so very 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 user-friendly to be able to use these and then let's say we wanted to take this trade remember we have over here we have our long and short positions which I talked about earlier we have a short position which we want to sell from the C to D point then we would choose that select our starting level okay and it opens up a risk management box basically for us it lets us adjust the stop loss and the take profit and it'll give you your risk to reward ratio right here right now it's showing 42 pips take profit for 42 pips stop loss that's a one-to-one -one ratio now if we bring it down all the way to this D point we can see right away that that's a hundred and fifty pip move and for that let's move it just above the uh, just above the A point at we'll say 65 pips roughly and that risk to reward ratio is 2.3 okay so it's showing you in uh, visually what your you know, your uh, what your trade is gonna look like and now you can actually let's say you're already in a trade pull this over to let's say you got in the trade right here okay you have your stop loss up here as price moves as it was moving in the wrong direction it's gonna give you a tally of how many pips against you this is going so it moved up about 34 pips before turning around and heading in our direction and then as it moves down it'll show you oh look we're 103 pips up and you can extend it out into the future as far as you want right now it's exactly a hundred pips in our favor and uh, we can either take profit or we can look for it to go all the way to this 150 pip move okay so that's a it's a very helpful tool when you're taking trades and one that you'll use very very often okay? and then the other one that I want to show you is the uh, harmonic pattern tool the X A B C D tool now uh, it has that extra point on there uh, the X because our A B C D tool is just an impulse leg followed by a retracement followed by another uh, another movement another leg the X to the C to D leg well the X is because we need a fifth point to be able to create our um, our two you, you know you call it triangles to be able to form an actual harmonic pattern and let's uh, let's take a look at what that would look like right now so we start out with our X and then we're gonna pull it down to say our A point and then we bring it up to our B point and that's gonna tell us what type of harmonic we're gonna be looking at from that point on that's why it's really helpful so we have a 70 percent retracement okay we go into our chart we look up you know our quick our quick um, our quick at a glance chart our cheat sheet for harmonics cuz I mean I'm not Scott Carney yet I don't have them all memorized even some people that are like uh, you know harmonic gurus um, still have to check every once in a while because it's hard to keep it all in your brain but um, so we we know that might be indicative of maybe a, um, a Gartley I don't know I don't know don't quote me on that but we find that first movement and we come down here and we put our C point for the next leg here and then that'll tell us you know where we can expect price to go in the future and D is going to be our expected price res reversal zone um, and a lot of people like to take the C to D leg as a trade and then when that plays out then take the D leg on down as the actual once it gets that pattern is confirmed take that trade down uh, to the correct Fibonacci extension level okay I'm not gonna go deep into harmonic structure here because we could be here for a good couple hours and, you know, so let's not go down that rabbit hole but it's just that's how you use that tool okay um, then if we uh, we've got our long and short positions and then the rest you know don't need to dive into that too much because uh, 
like I said, we covered most of that in the uh, in the first time. Now let's talk about indicators. So some indicators will pop up and they have their own little window down below, depending on if it's like a volume indicator or an oscillator. Okay, because we need that to go right along with price, uh, but not like the moving average that needs to be on top of price. And, you know, there's that's the difference between the two. Because like a moving average, it has to be on price because we need to see price crossing either above or below, or we need to see two moving averages cross over each other. A um, an oscillator is going to show you a lot of the str the buying strength or weakness in the market, and so that's a completely separate window, and that's going to be down here. But it will add to your um, three indicator quota or limit in your account. If you go in here and you try to add another indicator. Um, let's go into the built-in and I want to add um, like a Bollinger Band. It's going to say, sorry, uh, your account is weak sauce and you need to pay us more. And you know, you'll be like, okay, oh, no thanks for now. So a Bowler Band, Bollinger Band would be another indicator that you would throw on top of price and not down below. So what you can do is um, if you want to just take one off, you'll delete it. Um, let's take off the 14 and then this will be the same no matter what pair you choose so if you were go then to go to you know Audi JPY that's the only indicator because these indicators are across all your charts all of them so not unless you have different templates and you know you, you need a pro plan for that so um, let's go ahead and throw on let's you know let's throw on a Bollinger Band, boom. Close this out, and then once you have the indicator on there, you're going to go up here, and if you want to modify it again, you'll just click the Format button, and this will allow you to you know change what the Bollinger Band looks like. You can have your upper and lower bands. Um, you know you can have your background be a different color, and of course you can change the saturation of the black background. And what's good is it shows you in, in real time where you'd notice that if you did that in MT4, you'd have to set the settings and hit OK and then look and see if that's what you wanted. And if it wasn't, you'd have to go back in and change it again. So another thing that I like about trading view versus MT4. And then, like I said, if you want to do something like an RSI that uh, pops up down below, you know, you look for your relative strength index, which should be one of your go to tools and then you hit OK and it's going to pop up down here and then down here is where the hide and format and delete buttons are going to be right next to the name and yes you will have to endure this little advertisement down on the bottom of your chart uh, that's just part of the free plan and then you can select whatever color, whatever color you like um, nice thing about this RSI is that you can choose a background um, which is very helpful and of course the saturation so the price lines are going to be only your 30 and your 70 um, overbought and oversold. You know, you're not going to be able to change that. You can change the color if you like, and you can change the thickness if you like. You can also change the style if you like. But you can only have those two um, inside the actual indicator settings itself. And then for inputs, this is where you'll choose if you want maybe a 9 period RSI. Okay, so you'll, you'll be able to play around with that. Now, if you want to add something to it, all of your drawing tools will apply to um, these indicators down below. So let's say I wanted to put a 50 level. I just choose my horizontal line, put it in there, and then uh, change it to being a black thin line. And then I'll go into the properties, the coordinates, and just make that just 50. So I don't have to like eyeball it and you know it's, it can be a little bit frustrating trying to get it exactly where you want it and there you go now we have a, a median line right click to deactivate everything or left click sorry anywhere on this the chart and it is all set and then if I wanted to measure and see if I had some type of divergence you know I'll bust out my trend line and see uh, well, we're at a downtrend so let me uh, go sw swing low to swing low. And so uh, I'll see 
Do I have divergence there? And one of the great things is that the crosshair can help you line things up just perfectly. So we're here. I'm gonna make sure my crosshairs are on the same point to here. No divergence. Okay, we're making uh, prices making lower lows, and so is currency strength. So no divergence today. It looks like we're going to be in a downtrend for a little longer, even though it's in its oversold. Price can be oversold for for days. It's no indication that it's going to jump back up anytime soon. You know, it's just like I said, it's just a kind of behind the scenes look. The the main things that are going to give you uh, indications for uh, jumping in a sell or a buy are going to be divergence like we talked about so get to uh, studying on that all right last thing I want to show you is uh, down here we have different things down here now you have your screener this is just a tick this is just a ticker as far as um, it's going to show you different um, it's going to show you different indices and stocks and things like that. You, know? um, you can have notes where you can um, add notes to any markup, especially if you're going to publish it as an idea. You can use the Pine Editor and think of the Pine Editor as like, you know, JavaScript. It's the programming language that most of the indicators and um, uh, expert advisors and uh, things like that are written in so there's a lot of people that make a pretty good living writing out expert advisors and indicators using um, the pine scripting language uh, and if you ever find um, if you ever find like a custom indicator online and then they send you the you know the the pine script for it this is where you would add it in so if they send you an indicator and it looks kind of something like this language instead of like a EX4 file like we use in MT4 uh, that's where you would put it in same for a strategy tester um, you can add in strategies if you want to try that and run them in simulations uh, that's a little more advanced so something down the road not something you need right now and then this is the trading panel that I was telling you about and again I guess I should mention that uh, just like an MT4 you can expand or contract any of these bottom panels you can also do that here on this bottom panel as you can see, here are the here are the um, brokers that actually have plugins with TradingView that you can connect your live account to and um, trade at, you know place actual trades in TradingView. It's just going to depend on what country you live in and what you know version of TradingView as far as TradingView UK or TradingView Australia that um, you have available to you. And then there's paper trading here that will allow you to demo trade in trading view as well. So if you're interested in that, you do have that available to you. Now over here we have again the screenshot. This will allow you to take a snapshot of your chart and it'll give you a URL that you can save and then you can save the image. You can also copy and paste that URL into social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or email it to somebody if you want to show somebody uh, just a setup that you're looking at currently and have them, you know, analyze it along with you. So uh, it's a great feature. You can also directly send it to your Twitter account if you have a Twitter account. And you can also publish an idea to the um, TradingView community. And there's a lot of people that uh, that's all they do is they, you know, publish their chart markups to the community and they have huge followings just like in any social media platform and you can publish it publicly or like I said before you can publish it just privately to your own account so you kinda have like a little library of markups that you've done and you can go back and look and see you know how did they play out and you can do uh, some really good before and after analysis with those ideas so something that you might wanna play around with so something very 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 advantageous to use every now and then and then to close this panel you'll notice there's no X there's no like we have an X up here to close this screen you don't have that in trading view um, so it might be a little bit frustrating until you realize just click on this tab one more time and it'll hide itself for you that's actually very frustrating if you don't know how to do that so the other thing I want to show you two more things really quick before I let you go on your way one is that you can set alerts in TradingView, and this is one of the great things about TradingView, is uh, you can set an alert. You can do it two different ways. Um, you have your alert panel over here on the right, 
where you can create an alert. You can also set the settings of your alerts and you can also have a log of alerts that um, have already gone off. So if you miss one, it'll show up here in your alerts log. You can also go over here right to the price scale and as you move up and down in price, you can select this this plus button and that will also allow you to either add um, a, a trade if you have it connected to a broker or your paper trading and you can add a, a, a limit order or a, a stop depending on if it's above or below price or you can add an alert at that, uh, that specific level. So if you set that alert, okay, now we have this alert here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go off on the screen um, and you can set it up to actually to alert you in different ways. So let's edit that alert by clicking on the uh, cog or gear and you can change the conditions. You can change um, whether it's reacting to any of, you see how we have those three indicators on our chart? You can have it react to these specific indicators. Um, you can have it, the uh, condition on which the alert gets triggered as far as crossing up or down or exiting a channel. You know, you can have all those different variables. You can set the values of your indicators. So if it, like the, let's say the Bollinger Band ends up um, expanding or contracting for any reason, you can have it do that. And you can set it as a single alert or a, a um, recurring alert, depending on how you want to set that up. So by default, it's set just to show a little pop-up on the screen and to play a little sound, you know, a little bell. Now, you can set all the different levels, uh, your different you know, sounds, you can set it to whatever you want. One of the um, great features is that you can have it sent to your email, because obviously you're going to be logged in by your email. You can have it go to an email address and give you that alert. You can also have it send to email to SMS. So you can have your email actually push that notification to you if you have that set up. And what you're going to have to do is set up the um, SMS server in the properties of your account. But once you have that all connected, it'll be more than happy to send it to any number that you have um, saved to your profile. And it also has just a direct send to SMS, but you're going to have to be in the pro version to take advantage of that. Sorry, they're not going to give that one to you right away. And then, of course, you can have a message um, you know, pop up. You can have it a, have it a specific message. Um, to where when it pops up, um, there you go. And so now I know when um, the price crosses above this value that uh, AJ is going to be lit as, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? All right. Anyways, so let's go ahead and delete that. Yes, I don't need to know about it. And that's where it pulls it away. Okay, and last thing I want to show you is your watch list and you can create multiple watch lists this is like my main watch list where I just have everything but you can set specific watch lists um, to uh, to be anything you like so let's create a new list oh that's right you you have to have uh, pro to create multiple watch lists so if you have the pro version you can set that to you can have like a uh, um, you know, you can have like a crypto watch list or a currencies, wa um, uh, sorry, commodities watch list or an indices watch list, all that. Um, so that's fun feature, but you know, as long as you have everything here, you'd be good. Let's look at, look at that, Ethereum on a bull run. Okay, let's not make this any longer than it has to be. So that's all the basics and some of the intermediate to advanced features of TradingView. Again, it's really not that, um, you know, it's not that difficult once you get just the basics down and you start playing around with it. And after a while, um, I don't know if you're going to be like me, but I, like I said, I absolutely just love working in TradingView um, over MT4 because I find the charts to be so much cleaner, the uh, tools to be so much more user friendly, and it overall just to be visually more appealing than MT4. But you are going to have to figure out your uh, your own personal preference. Uh, it's just if you're going to be a, a trader, if you're going to make this uh, either a very solid hobby or even a career, you will 
have to bounce back and forth between these two um, so it's best just to get as proficient as possible with both all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up again I am Ryan with ZenFX. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining me today for this training module. You know, I know a lot of it's boring stuff, but it's really going to help you out as a trader down the road just to go ahead and get this stuff down now. Um, if you haven't already joined our Facebook group or any of our Telegram channels, I'm going to post the links in the description. We have a phenomenal free group uh, and community of traders that just loves to share and exchange ideas you know one of our mottos is you know we make money trading not off traders you know and so we're all about the free exchange of ideas I have a ton of videos on some of our um, more effective scalping methods especially the ones that I personally created in our YouTube channel so please give us a like and a subscribe if this video has helped you out in any way stay tuned uh, coming up our next module series which is going to be a big one it's going to be on the basics of technical analysis and price action and uh, I am just a big fan of price action trading and so this is going to teach you how to do everything from uh, setting your support and resistance levels your supply and demand zones you know what is a channel what is a break and retest you know how do I read the uh, candlestick patterns all of that stuff you know so until our next module like I said I want to say thank you for joining us and I will see you soon let's get those pips